Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about an alternative operating system known as TrueOS. This has a rather complex backstory and was first released in 2006 as PCBSD before having its name changed to TrueOS in 2016. TrueOS is a customised installation of the FreeBSD operating system which in 1993 was developed from the Berkeley Software Distribution or BSD version of Unix. It should be noted that FreeBSD and TrueOS are similar to but distinct from Linux and are certainly not Linux distributions. And if you're wondering why I've chosen to look at TrueOS rather than FreeBSD itself, it's because the default interface for FreeBSD is a command line. However, TrueOS defaults to a graphical user interface and so is a better choice for most people. And with all of this explained, it's now time to turn on a computer. Right, to get TrueOS you want to go to the TrueOS.org website where you'll see a nice friendly download button. So if we click on download, we'll go to the download page and if we scroll down here you can see we get to TrueOS Stable. And you'll see in the drop down there's various versions you can pick. We're going to pick desktop DVD image and we'll download that file. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a large file, 2.4 gigabytes. So I'll move forward in time to when it's completed. And here we are. We've now got the file downloaded onto our machine. You'll see it's an ISO file already. We haven't got to extract it. So it's all ready to install. Now, if you wanted to, you could burn that to a DVD to install directly onto a computer. But what I'm going to do here is to install it in a virtual box. This system allows us to run virtual machines on a computer, which I showed you in a previous video. So we'll go to a new here. We'll create a new virtual machine. We'll call it True OS. That would seem rather a good idea. It is going to be a BSD machine and it's going to be 64 bit. And we'll do next on that. We need to allocate some memory. we across with the keyboard here. I'll give it about half the memory on the machine. That seems very fair and we'll create a virtual hard disk and we'll uh, use that, that's fine, dynamically allocated so the space will only be taken when it's needed and uh, we'll make it I think about uh, up to say 32 uh, gigabytes, let's give it a, lo a load of space. And uh, there we are, we have a virtual machine for True OS. So we'll boot up our virtual machine and because it hasn't booted previously it'll look for an image, the last thing I installed was obviously Windows XP but we'll find another file which is the TrueOS ISO there and we'll open that and start. And uh, there we are, things are getting uh, clearly progressing. There's very little of us to select until that point. Uh, we'll now go on to uh, next. Now you'll see here we're going to install the TrueOS desktop but there's a very important thing to do after we do this. We get to next here and you'll see it gives us options for drivers and there's some virtual environment drivers. And because we're in VirtualBox, we want VirtualBox guest editions. So you must select that and uh, move forward with that to click next. And uh, that's OK. We'll click on next again. Are we going to do a full install? Yes, we are. And yes. And there we are. The system has finished installing and it wants us to click finish to reboot the system. But I'm actually going to go up here and go to a file and a close and a power off the machine. And you might be thinking that seems a pretty uh, dramatic thing to do. But the reason I'm doing that is because we actually got to remove our media and we can't do that when it is running. So if we go into settings for that virtual machine, we go into storage, we're going to remove that virtual drive. It's done its thing now. That is OK. And now we can run up TrueOS and it won't just start to try and store things again. And uh, this is looking good. You'll see it's picked up a virtual box video that looks rather good. So again, we'll have to uh, go and pick up that and apply. That looks good. We will do things in English. Uh, we will leave that as the host name. That's absolutely fine. We must set up a root password. I'll make it nice and simple. We have to set a username and a password. Let's do uh, that is done there. That'll be OK. Um, don't think we need anything adding there. I think I'll add actually a wireless just in case I need that later on. Shouldn't do some virtual box, but we might as well try. And uh, there we are. If we press finish, we should be able to log in to True OS. And as you can see, it is running. And if things are installed correctly with the uh, guest additions, I can go Control F for full screen and hopefully it will sort itself out. And there we are. 
TrueOS is now running full screen in VirtualBox. So, here we are again in TrueOS, which is running its default Lumina desktop graphical environment. And I mentioned this because every time you log on to TrueOS, you can actually choose the desktop environment, the windowing system you want to use. As you can see, Lumina is the default. There's a couple of others available after you've installed the operating system, but you can also install your own things like Mate if you want to. So you've got a lot of flexibility with graphical environment in TrueOS. Now, since I saw you last, I've done a bit of messing around with scaling and fonts and things to make things slightly easier to see on screen. I couldn't change the size of my mouse cursor. Unfortunately, it's still rather small. Sorry about that. But if we go down here to where, what would be the start menu in Windows, we get this rather interesting little panel where you can uh, scroll through um, different applications. You can also get to different folders you can see there. So I could go to say uh, pictures. I haven't got any pictures, but that's what the uh, file manager looks like in this system. But let's go back to that, that panel. We can also in this panel go and uh, browse applications if we wish to down there. And we can again go through that. This is everything on the system. Lots and lots of things are available there. Uh, mainly settings and preferences there actually. There's not that many applications pre-installed. And we can also show these things by, by category if we want. If we flick that so I could see say a graphics and we've got say the, the photonic image viewer there. Now, having said that, we can also search in this, as you can probably see at the top, so I could search and say fire like that, we'd find Firefox, it would run up to the Firefox browser, that works perfectly well, and um, it even goes to, uh, as I've been already, explaining computers. It must be working this system, you can see the explaining computers website. Now, having shown you a little panel down here, you don't have to use it because it's got a very nice desktop menu. If you right click the desktop, you bring up this context menu here. And this shows you all the applications and everything to access directly on, on the desktop. I like this idea. You can always click the desktop and get to any particular applications or utilities you want. That's a very nice feature. I wouldn't mind having this in Windows. Now, of course, you want to install applications in any system. To do that here, you use what's called the App Cafe. So let's bring up the App Cafe. There it is. And uh, oh look, it's telling us it's in TrueOS in case we didn't know. This is a rather nice system. And you can see here we can uh, browse by say category. We can go into same web browsers. And uh, there is, for example, Chromium. And uh, there it is, look, Chromium sitting there. We can install Chromium. Oh, it's icons come up now. And we can install that. And it's a nice straightforward system. Do we want to install it? Yes, we do. That'll go on and install. And it's now moved it over to uh, pending as it's obviously uh, getting on doing this stuff. And uh, we can also, as I'm sure you would guess, you can see we, we can search. We could do, for example, let's search for GIMP and put that in there. There we are, GIMP has come up. This is our old friend GIMP. We can install that as well. So I think I'm going to install a few packages. And once that's complete, I'll come back to you and we'll see how they perform. Right. Here I am back again after some successful software installs, as you can see. And one of the things I should have told you earlier is because TrueOS runs FreeBSD applications, we've got over 26,000 software programs available to use on it natively, which is pretty good, isn't it? And indeed, I think I remind us of that in this uh, LibreOffice Writer document. LibreOffice installs and works absolutely fine. I've also got here installed and running the uh, GIMP image editor with a nice picture of a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus with some rather extreme cooling on the top of it. You'll see that in the video next week if you're watching these videos in order. Uh, we've also got here the uh, Audacity audio editor that runs perfectly fine as well, which is good to know. Uh, the Chrome, Chromium browser also works absolutely fine. I haven't run that up for you, but I'm sure it'll come up in a second. There we are. Uh, there's the Chromium browser. We can go to say explaining the future and uh, yes, that works perfectly fine. And I've also got various content on the machine to test these things out. So here, for example, are some video files. And if I play that, you'll see the install video player doesn't struggle at all. It plays files perfectly well. So we've got no problems accessing media like that. And uh, that might make you think, well, can we run potentially video editing? And the answer is yes, of course you can. We've got a Caden Live installed here. And that also seems to have worked pretty well. We just bring in the test edit there. And if I flick to the project monitor and play that, you'll see that it works perfectly well. 
And while we're watching some video playback on the screen, it's also worth noting that TrueOS does come with drivers for NVIDIA graphics cards and also the latest Intel graphics drivers. TrueOS is a very secure operating system. And in part, that's because of the way it's written. Like Linux distributions, it's written in a way that's more difficult to compromise than, say, a Windows system. And it's also the case that most people who write malware, who write viruses, will be targeting Windows-based operating systems, or they'll be targeting Mac OS, or possibly Linux-based systems, maybe Android systems. So TrueOS, because it's a very minority operating system, is just not going to have that many people attacking it. So if you want a very secure system, TrueOS is a very good thing to consider. It's also got a rather interesting uh, feature built into it, which is called Personacrypt. And I'm showing you here the, the manual which explains that. And this is basically a way of taking a removable media, a USB flash drive, and you set it up to store the user's home directory in a manner that it's encrypted. So you could only use the machine with that particular device installed, and then you put in the password to get into that device. And when you take it out, the user isn't even on that system. So you're absolutely secure when you've got that device with you, and you can actually move between different machines and plug in that USB device, that personal crypt device. Now, I'd like to show you exactly how that works. I'm a little bit limited, but I can show the basics of it. We go into the control panel, and we go into users. I haven't got personal script set up on the account I created initially. We didn't do that when we installed. But if we created, say, a new user, let's call them, I don't know, Mr. Scissors. Can have his own username, and, um, Yes, and my scissors will be fine, and we'll give it a straightforward password. Again, just for test purposes. And here we could go into Persecrypt, and we could enable Persecrypt, and we'd have to put in a password, a different password, so we could do that as well. Now, unfortunately, I can't make that happen because I'm running this in virtual box. And if I install a uh, USB drive, hopefully you heard that went in there, it doesn't work. I, I can't find a way to get TrueOS to access directly USB drives here. If we put one in, it just simply doesn't come through. So I can't show you that working without doing a full install on the machine rather than the virtual install, and therefore we can't try out Persecrypt. And I do think that you know, Persecrypt is a very interesting idea. Carrying your home directory, carrying your user account with you on a separate device to take with you to a computer. TrueOS is a quirky but stable and secure operating system. And so, if you're looking for something a little different, it might be worth giving it a try. But now, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.